Howdy, AP Percal. It's Miss Cash. We're doing residuals. Here we go. Um, I think this first problem I put on a review at some point along the way. Um, so if it sounds familiar, it might actually be familiar, but we're, we're going to take it a little farther than we did last time. Okay, so what they've done is they've given us age and weight of babies. So age in weeks versus the weight in kilograms. Okay, um, so I'm going to begin by entering this. I on my Casio, I'm in statistics. So I think you're familiar with this at this point. So four, five, six, eight, 12. And then we're gonna come over to 4.2, 4.4, 4.8, 5.1, 5 5.7. Hopefully I did everything correctly. Sometimes um, if your answers don't match my answer key from the very beginning, then go back and make sure you didn't type in. I had a kid today in class who, and not on this problem, but one similar, it needed a nine and he put a six. So he didn't get the same answer that we got because he had typed in the wrong thing. Okay, so we can graph this. Um, and here are those points and we want to, they tell us to write an equation of the linear model. Okay, so we're gonna calculate the linear regression. We'll do AX plus B. I may just copy this into Y1 in case I need it. We're gonna draw it, so there are those points. Um, then it says, using the linear model, what is the predicted weight for a baby that is 10 weeks old? Um, I may write some stuff down, but I don't, I don't think I need to write this down for you yet. Um, okay, so I can come back here. I can go to my table, and here's that equation. I turn it on, hit select, go to graph that. I wanted to know at time 10, or at 10 weeks, not time 10. Um, and so the predicted value is the baby would weigh, um, so what is this, W of T? would be about, well, maybe exactly 5.395 kilograms. I don't know if that's a big baby or not, because I don't think in terms of kilograms, but my bad. Okay, and then they say the weight of the baby is 5.3 kilograms. What I would do for this one is maybe I could have, now we're, I'm showing you both methods. I'm gonna go into the graph, turn this on, go to draw this, and then um, let's see, the weight is, so we can actually, we can exit out. We know that the weight is 5.3. Okay, and we can G solve, find the intersection. And so um, what is the age in weeks? It's about 9.4865 weeks. Oh, well, nine and a half weeks, okay. Um, and so uh, the other option would have been, if you're here G solve, you could come over X cal. And so we wanna do that line, it'll flash and you tell it yes, so at 5.3. And that should give us the same answer. I, you can, there's more than one way to uh, attack these problems. Okay, so it says, using the model, what is the residual of a baby that is five weeks old? Okay, so the, uh, the predicted value would be G solve. We'd come over and do Y cal with this equation. When is the baby, um, when, when the baby is five weeks old, we expect it to be four point, well, the actual, okay, I'm sorry. Here we go. Five weeks, the actual weight was 4.4. Yeah. The predicted value is what I just found in my calculator, that at when x equals five, the y value is 4.47. And so the residual, if you remember, it's the actual minus the predicted. So the actual minus the predicted. And so this is a bigger, uh, so what do we have here? Menu, point. Um, No. Uh, uh, wow. You guys, I always am making my videos at the end of the day, and I'm always a little just, just a little tired. Uh, I was right. I just didn't. Goodness gracious. Okay. Negative 0.07. So what's this saying? What This is saying that the actual baby weighed a little bit less than we would have predicted from our model. Not much, but a little bit. Okay, so then it says, using the model found in example one, a baby that was 7.5 weeks had a, 0.7, a negative 0.7. What is the actual weight? Okay, so, um, so coming here, we can come back to this, this graph, and we're saying, draw, actually, let's get rid of this. We don't need this anymore. What is the actual weight of a 7.5 week old baby? Well, G solve, let's can figure out what we predicted the baby to be at 7.5 weeks. At 7.5 weeks, we said that the baby was going to weigh 
9325. Well, so this is the this is the predicted. And we just learned that the residual is equal to the actual minus the predicted. So this residual point negative point seven is equal to the actual minus that predicted is four point nine three two five. Yep. Okay, and to solve for the actual, I can just take um, this value, so let's come back here, and we can say negative 0.7 plus 4.9325, and so what was the actual weight? 4.2325. So the baby weighed less than they predicted. Okay, so now we want to sketch the residual plot, or the residual plot for the, the five data points, um, and so we have a way to do this with our calculator. Okay, so if I come in, menu, statistics, if I'm in statistics, before I get started, I can go in and set up things a little bit differently. So I can go shift, set up. And notice the second thing down is residual list. Okay, and this is saying, when we, if you want us to find the residuals, we can find the residuals and put them in a particular list. Well, if you think about it, where did I have stuff already? I have stuff in list one and list two. So it'd be really great if we could do the residuals in list three. So we'll come back to the setting up of this process. Come down to residual, we'll tell it list three. Okay, because list one and list two are busy. And so now we can exit out. So now when I go to, now nothing showed up yet because I haven't run the regression. So it doesn't know residuals to what type of equation. So now when I go, I could just go calculate regression. We're gonna do the linear regression ax plus b, and so now if I just, now all of a sudden do you notice that we have all these values that showed up right here. So it came through, just by doing that regression, it went through and figured out what the residuals were for each point along there. Um, so what we can do, we can either graph, well we can, we can graph that. So let's see, let's exit out. We're gonna go to graph. Now our graph one was typically list one and list two. And that was a scatter plot of the data that, that we had seen a minute ago and all was well. What I wanna do now is I wanna set up graph two. So I'm gonna call it graph two. And on this one, I wanna use list one still. So it's the, the X value stays the same, but I want the Y value to actually be list three. I want it to be the residuals. And so now when I go to graph graph two, this is what we call a residual plot, okay? And so we could come here and figure out roughly where these things fall. Does it let me trace this? Nope. Okay, but I can, um, I can look for my calculator and get a basic idea of, of what my shape needs to be, and then I can exit out and see, okay, at, uh, at T, we, when T is four, I'm gonna be at negative point well, they're real small. Okay, but anyway, we would graph these points based on, um, we call this maybe, well, how many weeks did we need? 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, well, 14, 18, 10. Uh, so, I mean, it doesn't quite fit perfectly, but there we go. Um, but we would sketch those, we can turn that graph back on, and it would look something like this. So at four, we're down here, a little negative, five we're still negative, at six we're positive, eight. And so you can see that this data doesn't have a real um, good trend to it. Okay, so we are gonna learn this together and we're gonna go practice. So let me, um, let me let you go practice the next one. I think I took number five and number six and, and added it to your homework assignment. So let's practice and see what we can do with this. Um, they had, somebody else had typed up the directions for um, a TI, so I will have this, um, uh, I'll, I'll just upload this um, into, the, into the notes, and then I typed up, did I type up the Zoom stat? Nope. I did not type that up. I thought I added something for Casio. Now I'm confused. Oh, Casio is at the beginning. This was Casio. This is T, this is Casio, Casio, here comes TI. Okay. Anyway, go practice. Good luck.